Your signature may have been forged, and you may not even know it. Only on Denver 7, we found forged signatures were used to help get a U.S. Senate candidate on the ballot. Denver 7 political reporter Marshall Zellinger has been taking a close look at those signatures. And Marshall, I know you went knocking on doors today and found that many voters were surprised to even see that their signature were on, was on something they didn't sign. And as of tonight, I have confirmed 10 fake signatures with more that appear suspicious. Someone who collected signatures for John Kaiser turned in these petitions to help earn his spot in the race. And based on what I found, there's now a question on whether or not he actually has enough valid signatures to stay on the ballot. Did you sign that petition? No, sir. Did you sign this petition? I did not. To be clear, did you sign that petition? No, I didn't. Denver 7 has identified more voters who confirmed they did not sign these petitions to help former state representative John Kaiser qualify for the crowded Republican U.S. Senate primary ballot, even though their names, addresses, and signatures appear on these documents. Someone has forged your name. I think so. Here's how signature collections work. The candidate hires a company, in this case, Clear Creek Strategies. That company hires workers to collect signatures door to door or outside public venues. The fake signatures we uncovered were collected on behalf of John Kaiser by a woman named Maureen. And I want you to look at her signature. Check out the distinct curl around her M. Now look at some of the signatures on the petitions she turned in with similar curls on this M and this H, and on the R and M on Rachel Malcolm. So first, I don't curl my R's like that, I don't curl my M's like that, there's no L's in the signature, and then my name's actually spelled incorrectly. Rachel's signature actually has two problems. The first, whoever printed her name spelled Malcolm incorrectly, which probably should have been caught and disqualified by the Secretary of State's office, but wasn't. The second problem, that's not her handwriting. So violated. Someone has forged your signature. Yeah. It's just clearly not the way I signed my name. Denver voter David Keene also did not sign Kaiser's petition. Compare his forged signature with the curly D and curly K to this, his actual signature. Nothing similar about it. No, that doesn't look like me because that's way too small from the way I do my loops and everything like that. You're starting to see a pattern. Littleton voter Ray Locker also confirmed this is not his handwriting or his signature. Well, the sevens match, the... You know, the sixes are the same. It's just, I don't know. You might want to look into this a little bit more. So I did. Six other voters who did not want to appear on camera also confirmed that these signatures are not theirs. Here's where it could impact Kaiser's race for the U.S. Senate. To qualify for the ballot, he needed to collect 1,500 valid signatures from all of Colorado's seven congressional districts. In District 1, where we discovered the fakes, he turned in 1,520. If you subtract the 10 we've confirmed fake, he's down to 1,510. So I tried to track down Maureen, the person who hired her, and John Kaiser's spokesman. And after multiple attempts, they all remain silent. But I have my phone here just in case. Wow. All right. So what happens next? Well, I asked the Secretary of State, and Kaiser, a uh, judge, ordered him on the ballot. And until a judge orders differently, he's going to remain on the ballot, which get mailed out to military voters overseas on Friday. And by I'll know tomorrow. If you're curious, if your name shows up on a petition and you want to find out, I'm going to find out tomorrow if there's a phone number that you can call. Wow. That took a lot of work. Impressive. All right. Thank you.